be strong. Be Hey guys, what's up? It's Jonathan. Welcome back to another episode with Hope with Jonathan. Hey guys, I appreciate everybody tuning in. I would appreciate also if you guys would share this broadcast. Like my man Jared Brown says, don't be stingy. Please share this broadcast. I'd love for you guys to uh, interact and comment. Uh, please don't be afraid to smash that share button. And uh, guys, I really uh, have a, a very uh, special guest today, a kidney warrior out of uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, uh, she's uh, listed at uh, Emory and uh, her inf information is scrolling below. Her name is uh, Leslie uh, Marie White and uh, she is uh, currently battling uh, Alport syndrome, uh, currently in need of a living kidney donor. Uh, guys, I want to bring her on and let her share her personal journey with battling uh, Alport's uh, syndrome and uh, battling kidney disease. Uh, this is going to be a really uh, a great, inspiring interview, um, wanting to get the word out to share her uh, personal journey. Uh, these interviews are so important uh, to help uh, those that are in need of a living kidney donor uh, to that we could, uh, you know, get the word out and uh, help uh, share her story. So again, guys, uh, if you would, please uh, share this with your friends and uh, don't be stingy and and guys, also you can share your story with uh, Kidney Warrior merch and uh, you guys can uh, go there and uh, submit your story and uh, Kyle will make sure Kidney Warrior merch that uh, you can uh, go over there and uh, share your story again guys don't be afraid to go over and smash that share button. All right, guys, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Please, again, let's welcome our special guest, uh, Leslie uh, Marie White from uh, Georgia. Hey, Leslie, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Hey, I appreciate you coming on today and doing the show with Hope with Jonathan. Well, thanks for having me. Oh, not a problem. Not a problem at all. So, Leslie, why don't you tell everybody a, a little bit about yourself? Um, as a small child, I was diagnosed with Alport's disease, which is a rare disease and it's genetic. Okay. I current I have two sisters, and my oldest sister also has Alport's, and um, we've been battling this disease all of our life. But when she was seven, I think she was seven or twelve. It was back in 1984, the year I was born. She had a transplant, her first one. My dad gave her a kidney. Um, and I've never had a transplant. I'm currently on the list and I'm looking for a live donor. Um, I found out in September of last year that 
it was time to put me on the transplant list. I found out that my GFR, they thought it was 14 back in September. So that was really shocking and scared all of us. We were not expecting that. Um, so he got me referred out to Emory and then I immediately started getting on the transplant list by doing all the requirements and stuff. And I've been trying to find a donor any way I possible I could find to ask people if they would consider donating. I've been posting my flyers everywhere. Um, as part of my op works and kidney disease, I also found out I'm anemic. So I'm battling that too. And it's kind of hard to tell sometimes if it's the kidney disease, the anemia, what's causing me to feel the way I feel. I mean, I feel dizzy, lightheaded. I get tired easy. And it's just been a struggle. I mean, there's, I don't really, I'm not really on a strict diet, but my nephrologist wants me to watch my potassium intake and my salt and watch my protein intake. He said what I'm doing is fine now, but don't eat things high in potassium for me. And I know everybody's diet is different when they have kidney problems. Mm -hmm. I sure the store I'm like oh my gosh I'm looking at these labels and I'm like <laughs> some don't have potassium on it because they're not required to and some right. do, like I have all this random stuff that I can eat or I think I can eat and I'm like how can I make a meal out of this yeah it's yeah. At, like oh I better get used to this but hopefully I can get my transplant and find someone who is nice enough to offer me and we're a match so i don't yeah. go through with dialysis luckily i'm not on dialysis yet and i just hope that i don't have to go on it i'm like terrified of going on dialysis yeah so i just feel like time is of the essence for sure my sister my healthy sister with no all ports she was recently tested at Emory, like evaluated, yep. didn't work out with that. Yep. So I was really, I knew not to get my hopes up too high because I've heard of a lot of stories of people having like eight or 10 or more people like offer and they didn't work out. So yep. in the back of my head, not to get too excited, but something told me like, maybe this is it. Like, because family is usually the better match. So I figured she would be my match, but it didn't try. Right. So God has other plans for me. So yep. here waiting to see what, what happens, what is in store for me. And sure, it. sure. I wanted to share with you guys a little bit about Alport's uh, syndrome. So Alport's syndrome is a genetic condition characterized by kidney disease hearing loss and eye abnormalities. People with uh, Alport syndrome experience progressive loss of kidney function. Uh, almost all affected individuals have blood in their urine, which indicates abnormal functioning of the kidneys. So I wanted to share that for those that don't know what uh, Alport syndrome uh, is about. Um, it's a very uh, unique disease, I believe. It is it. It's considered to be a rare disease, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh -huh. yes. And from what I understand, I mean, I could be wrong, but from what I understand, is it's mostly dominant in males. And me and my sister both have it, and it's rare. And we have like no idea where in the family it came from. So it's just yeah. random. Um, and you say it affects you and your sister, huh? Yes, I have two sisters. One uh -huh. has and my oldest sister does, and she's already had a transplant, but she actually needs another one. But her numbers are better than mine. She's like a 20 GFR. So she's not active, considered active at Emory on the transplant list unless you're below 20, which last yeah. time I went mine was 16 but it fluctuates so i'm still within range so i'm still active um yep 
we we want to send a shout out to uh, our watchers and viewers right now. Uh, Kidney Warrior Merch, Kyle Hockridge, we appreciate you tuning in. Uh, Steve Belcher has uh, chimed in. Yes, uh, Steve, this actually is a new subject for me. Uh, Alport's. Uh, this is someone uh, uh, brand new that I have, I've never actually covered an interview before on uh, Alport. So yeah, this is something totally new for me. And uh, hello, Uncle Jim Myers. How are you? Thank you very much for sharing. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, your your hearing loss because it's actually caused you some some hearing losses from what you were telling me. <clears throat> yes, I wear hearing aids in both ears, and I have ever since I was little. Mm -hmm. And I these are contacts also. So my sister that has all ports, she also wears hearing aids, but her hearing is way worse than mine. Um, and she wears glasses as well. So. So the outports uh, can have a major effect on your hearing and on your kidneys as well. Yeah, and it can continue to get worse. Is there any medication on the market or any research on the market that they're trying to do to to help uh, outport patients cope? No, not that I've heard of. I mean, my nephrologist hasn't said anything to me about it. I would guess he would by now, but. I mean, sometimes they give you like blood pressure medicine if if you have high blood pressure, but that's with any kidney person. But they haven't, I actually have low blood pressure. So that could also be a reason why I get dizzy. Yeah. It's usually right above 100, like my blood pressure. So, so you, you're currently not on dialysis. Um, Am I correct? Yes, I'm not. So how do you think uh, at the current time that you've been able to advert uh, being on dialysis? Do you think that it was due to the fact that you've been watching your diet or wh what type of um, what type of actions are you doing to try to continue to advert being on dialysis? Well, for when I found out in September of last year how low my kidney function was, I cut out all sodas. I drink lots of water. I at least drink 64 ounces a day, at least. I watch what I eat more. Lots of fruit and veggies. I mean, and, and also with all ports, it can make you like... It can make your weight low. Um, I guess that's with kidney disease also. I guess both. I don't know. But my sister's small too. Uh, my nephrologist uh, recently put me on a medication called um, sodium bicarb. He said it would help with my low blood pressure and he said my blood was acidic. But other than that, and taking iron supplements for being anemic, that's really all I'm on. He's never put me on any medication to help work. Yeah. So if you get to a point where you uh, possibly have to be on dialysis, which we're going to, you know, hopefully continue to share for you and, uh, you know, maybe a living donor will come forth uh, for you. Um, have you made a, up your mind of a possibility since you, it sounds like you'll be able to make a choice of which type or version of dialysis you'll choose to do. Will you do hemo or will you think about doing PD? I definitely want to do peritoneal dialysis because I don't think I can handle big needles going in my arm. Like, I don't think I could do that like every other day. Like I'm yeah. sure it, but like mentally I think that would just like I don't know and plus with COVID and everything I know you can do home hemo but I don't see myself poking myself or my husband poking me either with needles like for hemo I can 
I can see myself doing PD. I'm glad that option is there. I would totally try to do that first. And I would like to learn more about that too. I mean, I do a lot of research about it. I've watched YouTube how machines work and all that stuff. Yeah. I'm also interested in learning like what other people do for potassium restrictions, like snacks, like meals, like anything like that. I'd be interested in learning about. Yeah, uh, I believe that diet is definitely key for you, for sure, uh, you know, to continue to uh, watch those potassiums, such as, you know, not not eating a, a, a lot of potatoes or staying away from tomatoes and things like that. Uh, uh, I know beans are another another one. Um, so I think as long as you stay away from uh, most of those, there's some other vegetables, things like that, that are, you know, high uh, potassium that you have to be aware of. Um, but, you know, as long as you continue to watch your diet, uh, as far as potassium is concerned, then you, you should be okay. Um, are you, what, what type of diet? Are you following the renal diet right now? But I'm just watching my potassium yeah. and limiting my protein. I'm not a big meat eater as it is, but yeah. so that's kind of helped me. It's not like a big loss there, but I yeah. do just not a lot, not in big portions yeah. with every meal either. Some days yeah. I won't have any meat at all. Yeah. Well, hey, guys, we definitely appreciate Leslie coming on. Uh, guys, I want to let you know that her information is ticking down below on the ticker down below. Uh, as you can see, uh, Leslie is listed with uh, kidneysolutions.org. Uh, you can go to www.kidneysolutions.org and uh, you can uh, get pre-screened. Uh, you can click right on the link uh, under the waiting tab. And uh, again, guys, that's kidneysolutions.org. You can find uh, Leslie's uh, tab there uh, where she's uh, listed there on the uh, website, uh, along with many other patients as well. Uh, Leslie is uh, currently a blood type O. Uh, although an O can only receive an O, there's also the paired exchange program uh, so that uh, you can definitely do a kidney swap in that situation. Uh, Emory Transplant Center in Atlanta, Georgia is uh, where she's listed at. Uh, the phone number is listed there below. Again, we'd ask for you to please go over to www.kidneysolutions.org and you can find out more information uh, regarding Leslie uh, Marie White. Um, guys, I if you would, please uh, smash that share button and continue to be, uh, be engaged in this interview. But yeah, Leslie, um, I, I got a few, couple more uh, questions for you. And uh, again, I really appreciate you coming on, sharing your story. I'm really interested on this subject of uh, the Alports uh, because I've never interviewed uh, any patient before that was suffering with this. Uh, you know, I've I've interviewed patients with FSGS and uh, lupus and. Uh, you know, chronic kidney disease with, uh, you know, battling uh, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, things like that. So uh, it's definitely an interesting one, especially with the hearing loss, because uh, my my sister is actually hearing impaired. So uh, I can connect with you on that. I don't know if I told you about that. Mm -mm. Yeah, my sister is completely deaf. Um, my mom used to be a certified interpreter for the hearing impaired. So sign language was always uh, in my house. Uh, we would, I learned how to sign uh, at an early age, uh, just picked it up from my mom and my sister. And um, yeah, we've been signing for a long time. So um, it, it definitely intrigued me when you talked about having hearing loss due to the uh, outports. I know so. very sign language, but I know it <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Judy Aiken may be able to help with some diet questions. That is true. Judy Aiken is uh, Judy's 
uh, Journey Hawaii on uh, all social media platforms. She came on our show. She's she's following a diet uh, as well to advert uh, dialysis. So you can check in with her. Uh, she she lives in Hawaii. Her uh, her handles on social media is Judy's Journey Hawaii, or you can reach out to Judy Aiken. I can give you that information after the show, but yeah, she's definitely a source of a uh, uh, resource for diet changes and things like that. And uh, hello, Facebook user. I appreciate you sharing. I don't know who Facebook user is, but we appreciate you sharing. Uh, so Leslie, like explain like your lifestyle and things like how the outports uh, and having kidney disease, how that's affecting you right now. Well, right now, I mean, I'm still working full time. I'm yeah. trying as I can. Um, like I, I said, I'm not in dialysis, so that's good. Um, I usually don't feel like doing a whole bunch because I'm dizzy and tired. So I usually just stay at home, especially with COVID. I'm just trying to like stay home, go to work and not be around a bunch of people all the time. Um, my son, he's 13, he attends school, and when I do get a match for a kidney transplant, I plan on keeping him home and doing online school, if that's still an option with his school. Um, my husband, he is a stay-at-home he works from home. He currently has two jobs. He's working. Um, other than that, I mean, just living normally, as normal as I can with the all ports. I mean, I've had it all my life. It's just to the point to where it's kind of getting scary, I guess. But I feel like the more I learn, the better I feel about it, and it's less scary. I definitely noticed that. Um Pretty much just living, trying to get by, thankful for another day. Every day I wake up, I check my legs, I check my arms, check my face, see if it looks swollen. I weigh myself. I think I'm just paranoid. <laughs> Good idea, honestly, uh, to, to do all those things because you're making sure, you know, that because you don't want to get overloaded with fluid. That's for sure. Um, I'm speaking from personal experience because uh, overloading of fluid can shut down your other organs. So, uh, your heart, your, uh, your lungs and all that. So, uh, that's a good thing that you're checking your fluids and checking your body to make sure you're not, you know, really swollen. Cause that was something that I probably should have recognized right away. It was, I woke up and I couldn't put my shoes on. <laughs> so um that that is definitely a, a light bulb right there that hey there's something completely wrong so uh how about how about your 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 stamina like are you able to go all day without being really really exhausted and tired or how's well, that work for you i usually notice i start getting tired and i get home from work like when i get home from work i don't feel like moving I don't feel like doing much. If I, I know if I sit down, that is it. That is it. So I try not to sit down unless I know, okay, I can go to sleep whenever I want. There's nothing else I need to do. But yeah, usually I'm good with being tired. Yeah. Until about 5, 5, 30, 6, 7. Then I start really getting sleepy. Like I can't hold my eyes open. But I don't feel, I don't really feel that nauseous. Every now and then, I'll feel a little queasy, and I wonder, did I eat too much of something? Like, because I know uremia is a thing, so I'm aware of that. So, sometimes I get queasy, but it's nothing alarming, I don't think. I also take my blood pressure a lot. <laughs> yeah. Because, just to make sure it stays the same, it doesn't go high, because I know high blood pressure can cause damage to your kidneys and other organs and i know there's no real way to, unless you get blood work done if your potassium is high if you had too much potassium that day yep 
this I, I will tell you that if that's a sign with the blood pressure that if your kidneys are starting to really really decline uh your your blood pressure will be out of whack and it'll be you know fluctuating up and down um and it'll probably go high though and be alarming high like really high uh i know that mine went crazy high like my top numbers were in the 200s uh my bottom numbers were in the 100 uh, like one uh somewhere around like 140s 130 140s um so which is extremely high i'm talking about like really high i was really lucky i didn't have a stroke that's yeah. how high mine was yeah and uh the only thing that would bring it down is if i went and walked so i'd walk exercise come home recheck my blood pressure and it would be in the 130s over 85 86 and then just within a few couple hours later it would be right back up to you know the 200s over 120s 130s again so that was another sign that hey there was something going on and i needed to go get it checked out so uh definitely i think you're doing the right things you, you need to stay on top of your fluid uh your your checking you know your body for extra fluid um staying on top of your blood pressure controlling your diet i think you're doing all the right things and i think you're on the right track let's uh let's talk a little bit about your support system you mentioned having a husband and a and a son um is that is that pretty much right now who's your your source of strength yeah i have a really big support group i mean people at my work my sisters their husbands their kids my mom and dad friends i have a lot of people praying for me too so that definitely helps i mean kent bressler he's been a really big help so have you i don't know what i'd do if i didn't meet you guys i can just call you up or text you and any of you guys and You'll get back to me right away if you miss a call, answer my questions, or if you don't know the answer, you'll find it. You'll know somebody who knows the answer. It's been a really big help. Yep. I, um, I, when you first messaged me I, and we started talking and things, and uh, by the way, I appreciate you having the, the determination and strength to reach out to me. Um, you know, some people are, are nervous or, you know, maybe they're scared to reach out because they don't know what I'll say, or maybe they're just afraid in general to meet new people. But um, I appreciate you having the, the strength to do that. And uh, just to let everybody know, feel free to reach out if you ever want to interview or share your story. Uh, you can find me pretty much anywhere. Uh, but uh what where did you see me first or what what drawed you in to contact me i like to listen to podcasts and so when i'm working i like to listen to them so i was just doing a general search of like kidneys stuff with with kidneys in it and i was looking around and i was like trying to find one that looked interesting to me and yours popped up yours is one of the first ones to pop up so i clicked it and i started listening to it and I was like, okay, this is, this sounds like it could keep me like interested. And I was listening to it and I was like, oh my gosh, when I heard your story, what happened to you, how you like fell out of bed and stuff, that was crazy. And then I was like, I'll reach out to him, let him know that I enjoy his podcast. So, and then you let me, you led me to Kent too, which is awesome. He's helped me a lot too in his podcast. I like to listen to his too. Yeah. Oh, well, I really appreciate the compliment. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, the, uh, the podcast, um, uh, you know, at first was more about me talking and stuff. And then I changed it to more of about these, some of these interviews and I've been doing a lot more interviewing, but, um, my personal story is on my podcast, the hope with Jonathan podcast. And uh, I do go into pretty uh, in-depth detail in it. It was it was a traumatic uh, event, and uh, and then of course uh, Kent Bressler's uh, Kent's kidney stories. It can be found pretty much anywhere. Uh, it's a great podcast too. They, he interviews a lot of different kidney warriors. So 
And um, I actually, when I when I first started talking with you, I started to mention you know kidney solutions because I felt like that you would be a good candidate, uh, you know, to be uh, advocating. Uh, and for us to advocate for you as an organization uh, with Kidney Solutions, uh, especially you know since you're a preemptive uh, case where you're not on dialysis yet, uh, we need to get you a donor like right away. Uh, so I felt like we needed to get you on the site as soon as possible. So uh, anybody that's listening to this, uh, if you're battling kidney disease, and you're looking for an organization to help you, you need to check out kidneysolutions.org. Uh, we're, we're helping patients that are in need. Uh, we looked and searched to try to help patients uh, that, that are in need uh, to get transplanted preemptively, meaning uh, before dialysis. But if you're already on dialysis, go ahead and contact us as well. We'll, we'll help anybody. Uh, just reach out to us and uh, let us know what, you know, uh, what you're in need of and uh, as far as being advocated for and we will try to do our best to help you out at kidneysolutions.org. Uh, Leslie, I appreciate you coming on and uh, doing this interview with me and it sounds like uh, you have a great support system uh, surrounding you with your with your family, your your uh, your husband and your son, your sisters, your family, your people, your places of work and uh, you have an inspiring story. You're battling you know, currently outports. Uh, where where can people find you on Facebook if they're looking? If you go into groups and search Leslie Needs a Kidney, you can find my group there. Okay. Yep, it's right here, guys. Leslie Needs a Kidney group on Facebook. She has her own group. Uh, she's got uh, her some of her information's there. Also, guys, you can also find her right here at www kidneysolutions.org. Um, also, uh, guys, the, her information scrolling below, as you can see, uh, she's listed currently in Atlanta, Georgia at Emory uh, Hospital. Uh, the phone number is listed there. Uh, do you know the name of your transplant coordinator at Emory? Her name is Wendy Leedy, L-E-E-D-Y. Okay. D. Wendy Leedy. Okay, guys, so you can reach out to Wendy Leedy and you can uh, mention uh, Leslie Marie White uh, if you're interested in possibly stepping forward to be her living donor. Um, Leslie Marie White also is, uh, has blood type O. We've already discussed this, that a paired exchange will accept all. Uh, again, you can reach out also to www.kidneysolutions.org uh, for more information on Leslie White. Hey, Leslie. So I appreciate you coming on and, and doing this interview. Uh, was there anybody out there that you would like to maybe say uh, hello to or send a shout out to or anything else you would like to add to your to your story? Just. Um, hi, everybody. If you want to donate to me, do what he says and read the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, what would you say to um, someone out there that uh, would be a possible potential donor that, you know, would think about being your donor? What would you like to say to that person? I would like to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for offering me another chance at life and possibly skipping out on dialysis Dialysis can be so hard on your body, and I'm just terrified of it. Um, I just really appreciate anybody who can help me or who can even try to help me. Um, I don't think I could thank you enough. If you want, you can always reach out to me, too, on Facebook. You can message me. We can talk. Um, if you have any questions, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of support out there for people who donated kidneys to people that can help answer your questions. Even Emory could help. Um, don't be afraid. You're saving someone's life. You could save my life. Thank you. Yeah, that was, that was beautiful, Leslie. I, I appreciate your answer. And 
uh, guys, you heard it there first. Uh, I don't need to add anything else to that. Uh, Leslie's uh, said it all there. And uh, I want to let you know, Leslie, that we appreciate you, um, you know, and I appreciate you uh, coming on and, and doing the interview with me. And uh, you've always been so kind every time I speak with you. So it's definitely an honor to uh, help you out. And, um, you know, hopefully, Jonathan, we do these interviews uh, out of the bottom of our heart to try to help other patients just like you. So um, I, I appreciate you coming on, telling your story. We hope that you guys, that you found this interview to be uh, uh, educational and inspiring. Uh, for more research, you can also Google search uh, Alport's disease uh, to get more you know, info on that. Uh, there's lots of different articles on there. Where do you know where people can go to possibly learn more about Alports? Um, I'm not really sure. Other than maybe kidney.org. Yeah. Like okay. Those, or just do a Google search. Yeah. And it'll see what it is, and I'm sure yeah. there's other websites that have more information about it. Yeah. I mean, it's really oh. and. A lot of nephrologists probably, or regular doctors don't pick up on that right away. They usually, they usually want you to get like biopsies and everything. But I never had a biopsy because my sister, Michelle, she has, and they confirmed it was all ports. So I guess they assumed I had it too, but I've never been like biopsied. Yeah. So, because <clears throat> it's in the family and... I mean, the criteria, I mean, what we both have, we share the same things. Yeah. Well, it's definitely a unique disease for sure, uh, especially with the hearing loss. How much of the hearing loss have you have you lost? Is, are you completely uh, like in one ear or maybe or just a, a reduction in both ears? I wear hearing aids in both ears, and it's not as bad as my oldest sister that's had the transplant already. Um, I can hear without my hearing aids, but I can't understand what you're saying. Like I can hear something most of the time, but I just can't make out what you're saying. Certain frequencies are harder to, I can't remember which ones. I think it's like high frequencies are harder for me to make out, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's that's kind of like my sister. She wears hearing aids as well. She could pick up on some frequencies, but she is like she's really profoundly deaf. I mean, she she doesn't hear much. So yeah, I can still hear. It's just not very good, and it's getting worse. Yeah, it's yeah. a few months ago, and it did get worse. They had to yeah. change up my hearing aid volume. <clears throat> yeah. Well, again, guys, you can find her information at uh, www.kidneysolutions.org and uh, look up uh, Leslie Marie White. Uh, she's in the Atlanta, Georgia area. Uh, Leslie, I really appreciate you coming on. And again, uh, guys, this has been another uh, Hope with Jonathan interview. Uh, we're going to we're going to go ahead and sign off now. Uh, Leslie, again, you want to you want to say goodbye to everybody out there? <laughs> Bye, everybody, and thanks for watching. Yep. Well, thank you very much for coming on uh, Hope with Jonathan. And, guys, you guys stay blessed out there. Uh, stay safe out there. Uh, keep yourself protected from this uh, terrible, terrible COVID uh, situation. Uh, use your uh, hand sanitizer. Wash your hands. Wear your mask. And, um, guys out there, you, make sure you take care of your kidneys. OK, if you're showing any signs and symptoms of uh, kidney disease, uh, you need to go get checked out. Uh, that decision can change your life. Let me tell you, it can save your life if you just go get checked out. If you're noticing any sort of uh, chronic fatigue, uh, you got, you know, maybe some major issues with your, uh, you notice changes in your urine output, uh, maybe blood in your urine, things of this nature. Uh, you feel nauseated all the time. You you have a lot of different headaches. Uh, food just doesn't taste the same anymore. Uh, or you're just noticing some major changes in your body. You need to go get checked out by a, a certified physician and have them do uh, blood work to, to rule out kidney disease. Okay. Definitely go get checked out. Uh, I'm 
if you want to know more about my personal story that we've discussed on this, you can go to Hope with Jonathan podcast. I have a podcast on there uh, talking about my uh, personal journey. Again, also, you can go read my personal journey at kidneytrails.com. Uh, There's a blog on there as well. Um, and again, guys, I really appreciate everybody chiming in, uh, all, of, all the commenting and all the shares. It's been another uh, show with uh, Hope with Jonathan. Look for us uh, with more interviews like this. Hey, guys, y'all take care. God bless you. We'll see you.